Hi, this is a follow-up to my Booster Guidance tutorial. I'm going to cover the things I missed out, like controlling multiple boosters, setting the engines for the landing burn, and plotting. So we have these two boosters. We're going to separate them at some point and fly them both back to the landing site. So we'll activate navigation to the island airfield, which will activate Booster Guidance's target. Uh, now we're going to separate and enable boost back in quick succession for both the boosters. So we see them both do the boost back burn. They're operating completely independently, uh, just trying to do the same thing. The targets that we see are just for the active vessel that we can switch vessel. And if we go to the advanced tab, we can see the other vessel that's being controlled. Uh, we can see it's. Um, error in its target position, uh, error in attitude and what stage it's currently at and its altitude so we can see it's, um, it's a bit lower than us at the moment. So you can just keep an eye that it's working correctly for the other vessel. Uh, particularly useful when um, KSP won't let you switch vessels in the atmosphere. I'm just tweaking one of the targets so the boosters don't land on each other, which has happened. So I just skipped to the landing, we're seeing one booster coming down pretty close to its target, and the other one should be right behind it. And there it is. Uh, they both make good landings. So the one problem with um, controlling multiple boosters is due to KSP itself. Uh, both boosters need to be within 20 kilometers of each other, uh, else they get outside of the physics range and you'll lose one of the vessels. Um, the other thing is when you're in the atmosphere, KSP can frequently not let you switch vessels, uh, which can be a problem to see what's going on. But it, it does kind of work. So here I'm going to switch off some of the outer engines and just leave three for landing with an action group and then click set for booster guidance and that locks booster guidance to say use those engines for the landing burn and then it can predict correctly predict the altitude to enable the landing burn and then we can switch the engines back on but when it goes at the landing burn it will just enable the engines needed. So now it says too heavy which means at the current mass it couldn't use those engines to slow down the vessel enough to land but the mass will be lower at the landing burn but we have to kind of guess that a bit. Now in, in many cases you could probably just um, tell booster guidance to use the current engines and then change it midway through flight uh, but its simulation might might be off, particularly if the landing burn was going to be at a highly non-vertical um, attitude. Then it then it would slow us, and we might we might miss the target, and and boost guidance would would not be able to predict that in advance. Right. I've not clicked the action group now. Uh, boost guidance has um, toggled those outer engines off itself uh, when it went to landing burn. And hopefully, it's now going to do the landing burn. And get a good landing. So this rocket is very heavy, so it has to enable the landing burn pretty high up, um, and the landing burn um, it makes it quite difficult to steer because it's weighing up the effects of thrust and then aerodynamics. So this is probably the case where the boost guidance does sometimes get the steering wrong, but it's it's working pretty well here. Quite gonna hit it, but it's not bad. Ah, oh, ran out of fuel. <laughs> oh well, there wasn't anyone on board. Um, I'm now going to show you how you can log your flight, um, at least when booster guidance is enabled, uh, and you can look back on that, uh, possibly with a video like I've done here. Um, and see how well it worked. I mean, I don't know if you're interested in that, um, but I, I used it a lot for debugging. 
um, you can see when errors grow and when they get reduced and, and if the wrong thing is, is happening. And um, the logging files first. So they're going to be in your main KSP directory. Um, this is a soft link and they're called dot dat. And uh, they will give, be given the vessel name uh, followed by an extension. So the actual data and then the various simulations um, at when that stage was enabled. So when coasting was enabled there was a simulation and this is a log of that simulation. Um, so what we'll do is it's very confusing if you show all of those so let's just show the actual data for the flight. Um, and the simulation from when the coasting stage was enabled. Uh, I've added some uh, arguments there to, to make the, the main picture square. So I'm going to show the whole video of the flight in the corner and you can try and relate that um, to the logs as we go on. You need to go probably backwards and forwards to, to work it out. So what we're seeing here is in red the actual data and blue was the simulation. So broadly, just looking overall, we were very close to that. Um, so firstly, this plot shows you how far downrange from the landing site you were and your altitude. So we were falling nearly straight down. Um, we have some plots on the left here. So downrange against time, so we, we were never very far downrange, perhaps a kilometre. Um, and you can see it coming down there, I mean the scale in this is pretty large to, to make this plot square. And then we have velocity against time, so we can see that we started off up here, we started falling. Um, so our velocity was increasing. We had a small re-entry burn at this point, it slowed us down. We started accelerating again, and then a combination of the landing burn and um, air resistance um, slowed us down. Uh, the simulation stops there. We went, came down here. You can actually see where it gets to the touchdown margin stops slowing um, and then it just descends very slowly and so it's a major slowdown and descends very slowly to land um, this plot is altitude against velocity this can be harder to interpret but just imagine we started up here um, our altitude is high and we were falling, then our velocity dropped. It looks pretty similar to the opposite of the um, graph of half river, uh, but it's, it's quite different near the end. And interestingly, the simulation was quite different there. So the simulation is in blue, which was predicting we would go much faster than we did in the end, which is interesting. So what else have we got? Um, so this plot, magnitude of acceleration against time. So this acceleration is the acceleration just from the thrust of the engines. It's not air resistance. And we have this dotted line that shows us the, the maximum thrust available at that, that point. So maximum acceleration. So that depends on the mass of the vessel so that can rise near the end as we use fuel up get lighter and we can have more acceleration with the same um, engines so we can see this small bit of acceleration here is the boost back burn this is the re-entry burn and this is the landing burn. Next plot's interesting. Um, 
on the red line, the actual data shows us the predicted target error. So if you remember in the flight we did a small boost back so we had an error of like over a kilometer so the boost back burn brought that down to zero and uh, we descended and that error grew again to like 300 meters um, as the craft was maybe not steering correctly or something uh, but then it managed to steer and bring that back down, but not all the way to zero, and we saw that when we, when we landed. Um, okay. So in, in this plot here, this red line shows us a, a kind of thickness. And this is also the, the thrust and the magnitude of the thrust. So it's the same thing as this magnitude with the acceleration against time but we're showing it as the thickness of this line so it's quite nice to see where the re-entry burn was here and how long it lasted and it's kind of onset and offset well, that's almost harder to see now we're zoomed in let's see coming out uh, let's try and zoom in the landing burn and see what that looks like Okay. And we can see there um, we landed pretty close, but we've got a we've got a really big range on this thing. So if we really zoom in, yeah, um, our prediction was slightly off, but we actually managed to. Yeah, so we landed a bit closer. Um, gets a bit weird when you zoom in this far. But again, if you remember in the flight, um, just when the aerodynamic forces were reduced to a small amount and we, we nearly stopped, um, the vessel was able to use its thrust to go sideways. And so it, it went sideways quite a bit and ended up landing and toppling over because of that sideways force so that's that's shown shown there um, okay. that's about all we can see from that plot um, so thanks for watching um, please try this out if you're interested bye